So, <clears throat> I told you this was a complicated issue. <clears throat> Metformin and risk for dementia. Now, this is a Scientific American uh, article. And again, Scientific American is not the New England Journal, but it's a very well-respected article. Here's the title. I mean, a very well-respected journal. Could a diabetes drug help beat Alzheimer's disease? And the drug they're talking about is not insulin. It's metformin. Metformin may slow or reverse dementia and cog uh, cognitive decline, even in non-diabetics. Now, wait a minute. Uh, this is part two of a series, a mini-series on metformin and diabetes. Uh, I'm sorry, metformin and uh, cognitive decline. In the first one, we covered this article, metformin linked to higher risk of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And again, great scary imagery here. Um, but these two articles, yes, you heard me correctly, they're saying the exact opposite. Now, how did, the, how did I get started on this? Actually, I thought I'd already done a series on this. Um, I do get a lot of questions about metformin and dementia. It was raised this time recently by one of our viewers, Robin Privet. Uh, John uh, Lorscheider, as he uh, usually does, had some great research in terms of, um, of answering questions associated with it. He actually did cover uh, one of the major articles that was a stimulus for this Scientific American article. But <clears throat> to go back to the, to the scary article, the one that said, look, there's a risk here. Where did that come from? Uh, it was an abstract uh, presented uh, at a global conference on uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's by Dr. Kwan, um, K-U-A-N. Um, <clears throat> but that article, number one, it was, I had a hard time finding it published. I finally did find it published and I understood very clearly and very quickly why it had been criticized, um, coming out of the blocks. The <clears throat> Medscape, uh, co actually covered, uh, s some of the article as a news type, uh, coverage. Uh, they only quoted one nearby observer, even though this was a very important topic. This uh, nearby observer was Dr. Larry uh, Arashevsky. He's a PharmD uh, neuroscientist from University of Texas. And he said, I quote, very surprised and skeptical about the results. He went on to say that um, she didn't cover very well some of the obvious confounding. Now, uh, <clears throat> confounding. What is that? Well, it's an epidemiological term or a, or a uh, science of science terms or science of studies term. Confound, a confounder is basically something that's related to both the exposure and the disease outcome. In this case, um, the exposure would be metformin and the potential disease outcome would be cognitive decline or dementia. What's obviously uh, associated with both of those? Diabetes. So <clears throat> why do you go on uh, metformin? Because you have diabetes. What's the number one cause of dementia? Diabetes. So when you see patients, more patients on metformin having dementia, is that because of their diabetes or because of the metformin? That is the essence of confounding. So <clears throat> if you look at most of these studies, they do take a whack at this issue. What they do is they say, okay, we're only looking at diabetic patients. So therefore, um, that adjusts for the confounder, correct? Uh, not so fast. Um, a one-week history of diabetes is not a risk factor for dementia. You have to have it for years, uh, decades in most cases. So, and you have to have a, well, there is some, um, uh, let me qualify, um, level and degree of, 
diabetic disease is considered to be a much stronger risk factor than, um, than a, again, a one or two week history or even a one year history of diabetes. So as you see, as I'm, I'm trying to explain some of the problem here, why there's such debate in the literature. Um, again, as I go through some of the science, uh, I do get some feedback, sometimes some tough feedback. Uh, you know, you're on YouTube, you're going to get tough feedback. Quite often people say, look, just tell me what you think. I'll tell you what I think. And I told you what I thought in the, uh, the first video on this. I don't think either one of uh, the sides of this debate are very strong. Um, I don't think that, uh, di that metformin, is, is, metformin is extremely protective of um, Alzheimer's. Um, why? I think we would have seen it already. We've got plenty of studies. Uh, more of them on the protective side, neuroprotective side, than on the uh, danger side. But again, they're not, I don't think they're strong enough to where it, that's clearly um, the protection. But I spent most of my time talking about an older study from, or, or another study from, uh, from an older video, number one in this series. I haven't talked yet about the Scientific American article. Um, let me do that. But first, a brief introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Um, I, started off as a, I started off as an ER doc. Working in the ER gives you an appetite for prevention very quickly. I went to Hopkins to get training in prevention um, and ended up uh, te teaching and running the preventive medicine uh, residency program there. Um, <clears throat> This is the prevention channel. It's a prevention channel. It's uh, focused on the science behind how to prevent things like dementia because there are no good cures. Um, <clears throat> we have seen that we think that there's some uh, maybe cures for the other uh, disablers like stroke, uh, heart attack, maybe not so much again. Um, there are some things that we can improve uh, on a treatment basis with uh, heart attack, not so much with stroke, um, all of them, it's better to prevent it. So let's go back to the Scientific American article. Uh, first thing they say coming out of the blocks is that it's ultra safe. Millions of people have taken this for generations, decades, with minimal side effects um, other than some GI problems. And yes, you do get, especially the first couple of weeks, up to 20% of people will get bloating, um, some even diarrhea, uh, gas. The other thing they say is that it is ultra cheap. A $4, um, for $4, you can get um, metformin from Walmart. Um, I've got plenty of patients who are on metformin for a zero copay. So there's not a lot of pharma making a lot of money off of metformin. Now, like most things, there are exceptions to that. There are people that are making specific doses, specific delivery systems of metformin that do make significant money off of it. But plain old uh, regular metformin generic is not is not making anybody any not making any pharma any significant money. Uh, diabetes is it goes on to say next diabetes is a risk factor for neurodegenerative de degenerative disease and uh, metformin is associated with a dramatic decrease in risk. So <clears throat> why are they saying that? They're saying that based on a lot of the research out there. They go on to talk about the most recent one uh, doctor, from Dr. Kian Shi and her colleagues at Tulane. Um, good school, I would agree. I, I actually just got back from Tulane. My daughter graduated in the MPH program there. Um, in this study, Dr. Uh, uh, Shi and her folks looked at 6,000 disabled American, uh, not disabled American, but 6,000 diabetic veterans showed that the longer a patient was on uh, metformin, the lower the individual's chances of having dementia. So again, very interesting. Uh, that does actually start to cover one of the major remaining concerns about confounding. Um, not just looking at whether you're diabetic, but 
how long you've been on met, the drug, metformin, how long you've uh, had diabetes. Um, <clears throat> what are some of the other issues that they cover? Um, she did say in line with some of uh, the previous studies, they found that the uh, uh, patients who used the drug longer than four years had one quarter of the risk of having dementia. Uh, bringing that to the um, that risk to patients who uh, um, level of that in uh, the general population. In other words, removing the diabetic association with risk. Uh, they looked at other drugs like insulin or insulin pump, and they found that there was no protective effect there where there, there was a protective effect with dementia. It goes on to quote Dr. Suzanne Kraft. Uh, Dr. Kraft is a neuroscientist at Wake Forest University. Um, and she comes in with the type 3 diabetes um, quote. She's a neuroscientist who's looking at insulin resistance and goes on to say, look, um, a lot of people where you can't even find evidence of... Um, insulin resistance physically, still have it in their brain. Uh, Dale Bredesen made that quote as well, and you see that statement in the literature about uh, central or CNS, central nervous system um, insulin resistance. I can tell you, I've looked at that literature, by the way, that science, and the science that, that talks about that really is not based on going into OGTT, the oral glucose tolerance test, or uh, uh, let alone the, uh, an insulin survey, like the Kraft insulin survey. So therefore, I suspect that there's a lot more people out there wh who we think have only central uh, insulin resistance or CNS insulin resistance who actually have both. Um, <clears throat> but that's a different, a different topic for a different time. This is, again, the, the Scientific American article on metformin and its protective effect uh, for um, neurodegenerative disease, for um, dementia. So metformin then helps uh, the aging brain. In animals, uh, it's shown there's an uh, improvement of neural stem cells. Um, Neuroscientists Jim Wang and Frieda Miller, both at Toronto's Hospital for Sick Children, gave it to non-diabetic mice and saw a, a big increase in the cognitive performance of those mice going through mazes. Uh, human clinical trials show the same thing. Um, Stephen Arnold, a neurologist at Mass General, and if you haven't heard, heard of Mass General, that's Harvard. He's done a study looking at humans and uh, actually humans with mild cognitive decline, uh, early Alzheimer's, and saw a significant improvement in their performance. He also looked at uh, imaging of their brains and saw improved activity within the brains of humans on metformin. So why isn't he doing a bigger study on this? He said, What's, what's wrong with this study and why isn't it proof? Well, <clears throat> as he said, this is a small study. I could do a big study and fairly well prove this in a couple of years. But I need money. And this is, you remember early on we said, sometimes not having uh, big pharma involved or making money can be a bad thing. Well, that's the bad thing here. Um, he's not getting any funding for his study regarding uh, metformin as a protectant from neurogenerative decline. Now, does that sound uh, familiar? I did a, a series on the TAME study, targeting aging with metformin. Similar issue, significant challenges getting that study funded because nobody's making significant money off of the metformin uh, that would, uh, if it that would be used uh, if it actually is protected of aging in general for the TAME study or uh, neurogenitive uh, decline or neuro uh, <coughs> uh, dementia. So again, 
as I said before, this this association with metformin and uh, and dementia is a challenging one. It gets into confounding some of the and confounding can be a confounding concept. Uh, it also gets into uh, problems with uh, lack of adequate large um, um, <clears throat> prospective studies to really answer the question. Do, again, do I think it's uh, neuroprotective? Unfortunately, I don't think it's incredibly neuroprotective. Uh, neither do I think it's incredibly uh, dangerous uh, either. I think overall it ends up helping. Um, thank you again for your attention.